like a river attendeth my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my
that you still guide us, that we're still your family. Lord, we just ask you to be with us as we go through this morning. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Chrissy. Well, uh, we do want to welcome you to the live stream. We're excited to be able to do this. And, uh, I know this is not as, uh, as good as if we were together, but uh, we're going to believe what Cooksey was saying, that the Holy Spirit is going to bless us and unify us during this process. I wanted to start by reading the letter from the bishop that came. I think many of you have read this letter already. I just wanted to uh, reread it for us. This came to us uh, late Friday night, and we got on the, uh, the administrative council. We connected with them and talked about things, and I talked with the district superintendent re regarding this letter. Uh, and so the, I'm just going to read this letter to you. This, is, this comes from uh, Bishop Fairley, he says, in just the last few hours, I have had, I've been in deep prayer and had a difficult conversation with my extended cabinet. Uh, those are the uh, district superintendents and uh, people who work at the conference office. As your bishop, I am strongly urging and requesting that for the next two weeks, our churches suspend in-person worship and other large church gatherings. The people of God have a moral obligation to witness to the sacredness of life and our calling to protect and to preserve, even when it causes us to make decisions that tear at the very fabric of who we are as worshiping communities of faith and disciples of Jesus Christ. Uh, making a call like this absolutely breaks my heart because the church is the one place where people have been able to assemble in times of joy and in times of grief and celebration. Uh, however, as a passionate uh, spiritual disciple, I can't stand by while the lives of God's people are potentially jeopardized. I know this statement goes against what was previously shared. We had received a communication from the bishop a couple of nights before this. Uh, however, he says, the swiftly changing landscape caused uh, the COVID-19 uh, COVID uh, virus demands our flexibility. This is no longer an issue of faith versus fear. It has quickly become a matter of being faithful stewards of life itself. This virus has the capability of overwhelming our healthcare system, putting the most vulnerable among us at risk. I know that as Christian men and women, none of us desire that. Our Christian tradition, and especially our Wesleyan roots, have always called us to be concerned about the most vulnerable among us. It is through uh, the, these efforts uh, that I am urging us to give witness to these roots by doing what is necessary to help us slow the spread of this virus. I am very grateful to those congregations that are, have already made arrangements to discover alternative ways to worship. Please know that ultimately nothing can keep us from worshiping Jesus. In this season of waiting, we simply have to find alternative ways to care for and to worship with each other. Please be safe and always consider the health and well-being of others. This virus has already caused so much damage. It is my prayer that we not uh, let this cause us to question one another's faith. Worshiping, uh, worship God with all your heart because the worship of your heart is what God truly desires. And so that's the letter that we received a few nights ago. Uh, we met uh, via email with the administrative council, talked with the district superintendent for clarification, and was, was instructed that indeed uh, they're asking us, urging us to close our offices. What's, so what's gonna happen is we're gonna close the church office for the next couple of weeks. Uh, effective midnight last night, the church office will be closed and the staff will be instructed to work in their homes. Uh, this shutdown includes all worship gatherings, small group meetings, and reserved activities. We will be live streaming this morning. Uh, there was a gl glitch in the live stream. You, some of you probably tuned in. This is actually recorded, and we're going to post it uh, as soon as we possibly can. But we will be uh, live streaming during the 9.30 hour on Sunday mornings, and we'll archive the stream so that whoever, whenever you want to watch it, uh, it'll be available to you. I believe you'll find more information about what we're doing on Facebook and on our website, which is www.church.org. Um, so kind of use those uh, references for informational purposes. Uh, I will say this, uh, that this is one of our great concerns uh, during this period of time. 
um, that we will be receiving offerings uh, via electronic giving and uh, through the mail. Um, if, our, if our giving, and this is one of the concerns of the leadership of the church, if giving uh, starts to wane, if it starts to decrease, then we will probably um, be forced to, to lay off uh, staff uh, because of that. We don't really want to do that, uh, but we may, we may actually uh, start to do that. I will say this, and I'll make this commitment, if, if uh, giving uh, starts to fall off and we have to make decisions about layoffs and things like that, uh, I will, before we do that, I will forego my salary and, and then we'll see where we can go from there. But this morning I've asked Denise, uh, she's our treasurer, and I've asked her to kind of explain how online giving works and mailing um, uh, and your, your checks. And if, if we can do that, uh, we want to be faithful. I just want to remind you that during this time, uh, Sherry and I will continue to be tithing. Uh, it won't stop us from tithing, and we encourage you to, to do the same. So I'm going to ask Denise to share as well. Good morning. I wanted to take this opportunity to share some information about our online giving system, Faith Hub, for those of you that are not familiar with it or have not used it. If you go to our webpage, chchurch.org, in the upper left-hand corner, you will see a three-lined menu bar. If you click on this, it will drop down a list of areas that you can look at to see more information about our church. One of those is marked Give. If you click the Give button, it will take you to a page titled Online Giving. In the middle of this page, you will see a black button with white writing that says Give Online. If you click this button, it will take you directly to Chapel Hill's bank homepage and take you through a list of steps to either set up a one-time gift or a recurring gift if that's what you wish. Also on this page, it will give you the opportunity to designate your funds to either general or building. There is also on our bulletins, if you have saved one from a previous Sunday service, a QR code in the upper right-hand corner. If you have a smartphone and place your camera over this QR code, it will bring up a link directly to that same bank homepage for Chapel Hill and take you through the exact same steps to set up a gift. As always, if you're not comfortable with online giving and you would rather mail a check, we will be having people check the mail at Chapel Hill daily so that your check will be safe and secure if you choose to send that in. As always, if you want to designate that gift for something specific, we ask that you write that in the memo line. If not, we will, we will assume that that is for the general fund and the general use of the church. Just want to say thank you for your gifts and thank you for giving back a portion of what God has blessed you with. Church, this is Chris Duke, your youth director, and we are going to also tell you about an altar tour. I'm sure many of you are curious as to what happened when an altar tour came this last Wednesday on March 11th. We did have a total of 135 students and an estimated amount of 60 adults that came to the unaltered event. Um, and it was just a really beautiful time where the students from Walter really gave testimony um, about their personal experiences of purity and living an altered lifestyle after um, a life that was very altered. Uh, the, on their website, they actually say the prominent message that was proclaimed here at Chapel Hill a little louder this time was that God is a loving Father who is ready for you to come home. God knows your true worth and loves you. And during the time of altar call, there was actually 23 ladies that rededicated their life to Christ and one young gentleman who gave his life to Christ for the very first time. So that is a big praise. And they asked them a question at, alt at the altar here. They asked them, who is Jesus to you? And these are just a few things um, of many things that they listed. And you can actually check our Facebook page um, for some of the uh, other details about what they said, pictures for it as well, if you're curious as to how it turned out. But some of their answers were, Jesus saved me. He made me who I am today. I know I will always be loved by him. When I am feeling lost, I can turn to him. God reminded me that he made me for myself and not for others who, what they want me to be. And the last one that I really liked was Jesus allowed me to change and start new. So we were uh, very pleased from the unaltered event. And it was a beautiful night where our families got to learn how to uh, better communicate with their students. 
Good morning. My name is Nancy Bennett, and I am the chair of the worship team. I just wanted to give you a message about what we are changing up a little bit this year. We have normally in the past for Easter have um, had the opportunity for you to buy a lily and make that in memory of or um, in honor of someone special in your life. This year, with all the devastation that has gone on in the Nashville area, um, and in particular, there is a church called the East End United Methodist Church that was um, just drastically damaged their building, and it's going to take um, quite some time and quite a bit of financial need for them to get things kind of back together for them. And as a matter of fact, last uh, Sunday in their dedication for God, they have set up a tent in their uh, parking lot, and that's where they're holding church. So we are asking that instead of us buying lilies this year, that we are actually going to take that money that you would donate uh, in memory of someone and dedicate that. We are going to take that money and send that to the church uh, in Nashville and try to help offset some of their costs that are going to be coming up. Uh, insurance just doesn't always uh, take care of all those things. So um, you can, we actually, we're going to have inserts in the bulletin, so when we are actually meeting in the building, there will be inserts uh, for you to fill out in memory of and honor of and uh, how you would want that marked and how much. But if you would like to go ahead and get that done ahead of time, you can mail that in and just make sure that when you put in your uh, check that you put in the memo that it is for the Easter donation and we'll make sure that that gets sent in, uh, to the church down in Nashville. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Nancy, for that. Uh, that, uh, that church was, uh, I heard that the tornado was headed toward the town. That, did, did you hear this? It blocked the house. That, that blocked the house. The church was in the way and, and saved the house that yes. had been devastated. Yeah, there was a family with young children and yeah. it actually blocked their house. Family with young children in that house. Wow. And I love that story, and I love what we're doing with our with our Easter lily donations this year. Um, I love that story about the, the church because that's really the, what the church does. The church is here to protect the surrounding community, and that's kind of why we're doing what we're we're, we're doing. A lot of people are maybe critical about uh, you know closing churches and things like that, but when the church closes in love for and protection of uh, some of our people, I, I just see that that is. That is really why why we're here. I wanted to read a couple of letters from uh, from the Apostle Paul and his frustrations. Uh, I just found I just researched a couple of scripture readings this morning where Paul was frustrated that he could not be with the church and different churches like the, the church in Rome, the church in Thessalonica, and also he uh, he wrote one to Timothy and his frustration of uh, I want to be with you. I so much want to be with you, and I just wanted to kind of read that, those passages, because they really reflect the spirit of what we're uh, kind of going through at Chapel Hill. We want to be together. And this is, this is the words of Paul from Romans chapter 1, uh, verses uh, 19, 9 to 13. He says, As God, whom I serve in my spirit, in preaching the gospel of his Son, is my witness, how constantly I remember you in my prayers at all times. And I pray that now, at last, by God's will, the way may be opened, for me to come to you. I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. And this is his letter to Timothy, 2 Timothy 1, 3-4. He says, I constantly remember you night and day in my prayers, recalling your tears. And he says, and hear the passion in his voice and the passion that we feel today. He says, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. And then the Thessalonians, this is First Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. He says, uh, since we have been physically separated from you, in one of the translations, it actually says we have been orphaned. He, he saw his separation from the church as, a, as, a, as an orphaning, uh, being separated from parents. So he said, since we have been physically separated from you, my brothers and sisters, though never for a moment separated in heart, we have longed all the more to see you. Yes, I, Paul, have longed to come and see you more than once, but somehow Satan prevented our coming. And there are, there are things today that are separating us from the church, preventing us from being together at the church, but are longing to be with each other, the spirit that connects us. 
uh, absolutely makes us overcome uh, these circumstances. I wanted to go to a time of prayer. As always, we, I brought the prayer cards that were handed in from last week, and we're going to pray over those uh, prayer cards. If you want to send in a prayer request this week, you can still do so. And you can send uh, your prayer request to my email. It's pastormike at chchurch.org. I'll say it again. Pastor Mike, P-A-S-T-O-R-M-I-K-E, at chchurch.org. And you can send your prayer request to that email address, or you can text it to my cell phone, which is 859-333-6919. I'll give that to you again, 859-333-6919. And you can text these prayer requests. But for now, I'm trusting that you, watching at home, uh, along with these prayer requests right now, uh, we're going to lift our hearts to God and ask Him to give us uh, His grace and the answer to these prayers. Let's fire us together. Your blessings on this church as uh, we uh, continue to move in your spirit and to do the things that you call us to do in this community. We ask especially for those who are in danger's way, in the way of danger because of this coronavirus across the world, those who have lost loved ones, those who are presently suffering from this virus, and those who are, we're asking you to keep safe from this virus. We lift all up to you, and we ask that your grace and your Holy Spirit would overpower the situation and bring healing to your, to your people. We ask God that you would bless whatever the needs are represented in these cards from last week, represented in each home that receives uh, this message, that you would minister to, bring your healing touch, your overpowering spirit. We know that you're not limited to time or distance, and we know that you can answer prayers right now, right where your people are. And so we lift our hearts to you as we echo the, the prayer that was taught to us by our Savior, as he said, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the world. Morning, Chapel Hill. Just want to wish you well and all that's going on out in our community and in our world and the fear that's among our nation right now. I just want to try to share some things with you this morning. I have a passage out of Psalms 91 that I think are words of hope and uh, I think it really pertains to us and who we are in Christ and the power that we have within us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we are to be light, we are to be salt to the earth. And, uh, and it's in these moments that we as the body of Christ should shine like a light, be that city on a hill that the Bible talks about that can be seen from far away. And uh, I hope this scripture, or these passages of scripture this morning will bring you comfort in knowing where your power lies and who's got you. He loves you. And he's closer than any circumstance that you're going through right now. So as I read, may God open your eyes and your ears to hear and see. This is Psalms 91. It says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, on him I lean and rely, and in him I confidently trust. For then he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Then he will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings shall you trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror of the night, nor of the arrow, the evil plots and slanders of the wicked that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor of the destruction and sudden death that surprise and lay waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only a spectator shall you be, yourself inaccessible in the secret place of the Most High as you witness the reward of the wicked. 
Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your dwelling place, there shall no evil befall you, nor any plague or calamity come near your tent. For he will give his angels a special charge over you to accompany and defend and preserve you in all ways, all your ways of obedience and service. They shall bear you up on their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the serpent shall you trample underfoot, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he knows and understands my name, and he has a personal knowledge of my mercy, love, and kindness, and he trusts and relies on me, knowing I will never forsake him, no, never. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Take heed to those words, family. We are the body of Christ, and he's empowered us to overcome many things. He did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So may you feed upon that scripture. I encourage you to go read that today and meditate on that and let God speak to you through that. Just remember whose you are. You belong to him. You're a child of the king. Light of the world, you step down into darkness open my eyes let me see beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you so here I am to worship here I am to bow down here I am to say
epidemic in our own country. We are not alone and neither are the countries who have experienced great loss and suffering. We have a God who sees us and hears our cries. As I sat quietly with God, I asked why? Why this virus? Why the tornado that was recently in Nashville? Why school shootings? Why hurricanes? Why the pain and suffering from abuse, divorces, addiction, and diseases? I cried out into the night, Lord, help me to see and understand the why. God guided me with these three clarifications to share. First, God let me know and reminded me we are never meant to suffer. When he created the heaven and the earth, there was no pain, no suffering, and no viruses. God said in Genesis 1, 331, then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. Second, God directed me to go back and read from the book of Exodus. In the book of Exodus, 400 years had passed since Joseph had moved his family to Egypt. These descendants of Abraham had now grown to over 2 million strong. But Pharaoh was frightened by their numbers and feared of being overpowered. So he made them slaves so that they could not upset his balance of power. I could not help but evaluate my own life and wonder if I too was acting like Pharaoh by not giving up the commands that God had over my life. Is this virus similar to the plagues from the Old Testament meant to get our attention as God tried to do with Pharaoh? I encourage each of us to evaluate our lives and see if we too have had a Pharaoh-like attitude, fighting to keep control over our marriages, careers, children, finances, addictions, in any ways our human flesh, which keeps us from experiencing love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. Lastly, I encourage each of us to read these three chapters in the Bible and ask God to show us His way in our life as He did with Moses. Throughout these chapters to read in Exodus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, we will read paragraph after paragraph where God would say to Moses and Moses would follow. If we ask God's guidance over our lives, he will answer. And then we must follow and trust in his direction just as Moses did. Oh, 
thinking this I love this church I love the people in this church this is one of the greatest churches on the planet as far as I'm concerned so much uh, so the people here care they love um, if you are watching this uh, this uh, uh, clip of this service and you're not a part of Chapel Hill and you just stumble onto this website and you're looking at it we invite you to come and be part of this because it's really amazing what God is doing here Another thing that occurred to, to me while we were talking is what, the, as, as obviously this is a strange time in the life of this church where the church doors are actually closed on Sunday morning. And the question that in my heart is, what, what closes church doors? What closes church doors? And um, historically, when the enemy has tried to close church doors, the, uh, the persecution broke out. And said, you, the, the, the world has said to the church, you will not meet. And the church has re responded by saying, yes, we will. And the church has gone underground. The church has grown. Uh, in times of suppression, the church just explodes in growth. Um, but this time is different. This, is, this time is a time when the church is saying of itself, we do not want to harm the most vulnerable of our membership. And it's an odd time when the church voluntarily says, we will close our doors because... We love our people. And that's a wonderful thing. I think it's a wonderful motivation. So with that in our hearts, we long to see you again. We want to be together again. We will soon be together again. The, the phrase is, uh, though apart from each other, we're still a part of each other. And we will be together soon. So I'm going to close this time of worship uh, with, a, with a prayer as we bow our heads together. Father, thank you for your love for us. And thank you for the love that you have shed in our hearts for each other. Even as we do this distant from each other, I still sense the love that we have as, uh, as Christians, brothers and sisters in Christ for each other. I pray that you bless every one of us, keep us safe and in your love, and help us to continue to serve one another in love. And we thank you for what you'll do in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Stop. 
Hallelujah, rock that stand, call the 